So next we have uh, Dr. James Thornton from Florida, and his topic today is why is there life? So Dr. James, the floor is yours. Okay. Uh, am I good? Uh, Nabem, thank you so much, and Ram, thank you as well for inviting me to present uh, at this uh, lecture series. Over the next half hour, I'd like to present some slides on the question, why is there life? So the traditional approach to the origin of life focuses on how life emerged and where and when the transition to animate matter occurred. Advances in our understanding of the biochemistry of life's origins continue in laboratories around the world. The thermodynamic consistency of increasing organic complexity and proven or plausible scenarios for a host of prebiotic constructions leading to advanced organic complexity have been proposed. If not advancing. Thermodynamics orders the advancement of complex matter throughout the universe. Complexity, including life, can advance under thermodynamically unfavorable conditions through dynamic kinetic non-equilibrium systems. Life's teleonomic character, which directs our social environment, and animate matter's unique characteristics can be approached from this abiological perspective. It's not advancing. Theories to explain the creation of prebiotic chemistry transitioning to life are categorized as either bottom-up or top-down. An extensive literature has developed over the past century for the bottom-up school, which builds on the gradualism of increasing organic complexity. The equally plausible top-down approach, conversely, envisions the sudden emergence of animate matter upon attainment of critical levels of certain interacting molecules, resulting in autopoietic systems. Crucially, all theories on how life arose share the recognition complexity advances. Although there is no certainty the level organic complexification reached on the prebiotic earth, complexity advanced markedly in transitioning to animate matter and ultimately to Homo sapiens. A relevant question to the inventory of how, when, and where life arose is why is there life? the motive force behind why advancing complexity should occur and transition to animate matter remains uncertain, but when elucidated will add greatly to our understanding of life. Exploring the nature of the forces, mechanisms, and possible laws impacting the creation of life will also enhance our understanding of what life is in the broadest context. So as we advance our knowledge of how life may have arisen and what life is, why there should be life is gaining focus. However, uncertainties persist whether the why question historically posed by philosophers and theologians can be answered. Aristotle argued for a dualism that included life's material aspect, but proposed life is endowed with a directing vital principle. William Schaff wonders if the why question should remain within the realm of philosophy and religion. Christian de Duvet ponders whether we will ever succeed in explaining the origin of life naturally before affirming it will be discovered within the natural world. However, he claims as long as the problem is not solved, the tendency to invoke, quote, something else will subsist. So what is the nature of this vital principle? Is there something unique in the transition to animate matter infusing teleonomy or purpose into this new arrangement of common elements or is this something else suggested by De Duvet simply a natural progression of advancing complexity? Importantly, is the transition a deterministic or contingent process? Stuart Kaufman opines, somehow, quote, somehow in some as yet mysterious process, the organic molecular diversity of this spinning globe has taken energy and cooked itself up from simple atoms and molecules to the complex organic molecules we find today, noting, we now seek to understand the wellsprings of this stunning molecular diversity, unquote. Advancing complexity, inanimate and animate, is evident throughout the universe and usually requires input of energy into these dynamic kinetic non-equilibrium systems. Forces, in addition to the electromagnetic force, mechanisms, and potential laws should be considered in answering why life evolves. Concurrently, Defining the complexification of matter in broad terms can be shown to facilitate our understanding of life's unique purposeful characteristics. What are those characteristics? Well, 
The most apparent contrast between animate and inanimate matter is the advanced complexity and the tenacity of animate matter to persist. It is this unique aspect of life, its drive to persist, that causes the greatest philosophical conundrum, raising the question of whether life has purpose. Why does life demonstrate a tenacity to persist, grow, reproduce, and evolve? At the pinnacle of evolution, this resilience to persist is manifest in our desire to procreate and avoid death, the two strongest motives we are cognizant of as Homo sapiens sapiens. How can we explain this apparent force employing what is known about advancing complexity within the universe? To grasp the essence of this force and its purposeful nature, consider the DNA repair enzyme uracil DNA glycosylase, whose sole purpose is to stride along DNA. When the repair enzyme encounters a uracil base pair mismatch, its job is to remove the wrong base, allowing insertion of the correct matching base by additional enzymes. The purpose is to maintain the informational integrity of DNA so mutations won't pass to the next generation during meiosis and mitosis, and metabolism won't be impaired through faulty transcription. From the biochemistry, this singular example of metabolism is easily explained. Yet, behind this process, one still ponders the why question. Why does this enzyme go about its business day after day? In other words, what is the driving force behind this example of metabolism and by extension, all life? In broader terms, what facets of the physical universe drive the advancement and maintenance of complexity regardless of the nature of the system? How should we define complexity within the context of animate and inanimate matter? Eric Chasen defines complexity as a state of intricacy, complication, variety, or involvement and describes all complex systems as organized, non-equilibrated structures that acquire, store, and express energy. John Maynard Smith acknowledges the difficulty in defining complexity in living organisms, settling on a qualitative description that recognizes the number of parts composing an organism. Addie Pross states complexity is not readily defined and attempts over the years to quantify the concept within the biological context have not proven too successful. He acknowledges the nature of biological complexification as the nut that needs to be cracked. And in answering the why question, the goal and challenge is to ascertain rules, if such rules exist, that govern processes of complexification. To find commonalities of complexification to either side of the animate-inanimate divide, the following distilled description of complexification is offered. The creation of molecules with increasing numbers of atoms and their arrangements. The creation of increasing systems chemistry complexity by increasing numbers of interactions between molecules and increasing numbers of chemical pathways and in their interactions. However, advancing complexity must be understood in its fullest sense to explain the variety, degree, amount, and persistence of matter as it complexifies. These qualifiers define fully and equally inanimate and animate complexification. As with inanimate complexification, the complete list of descriptors of animate complexification will be realized at a level permissible by the physical environment. These descriptors can have variable representation and different hierarchical relationships within any inanimate or biological system based on the system's relation to its environment via thermodynamic and kinetic reactions, as well as contingent and deterministic processes, and include maximizing the net amount of complex matter, maximizing the variety of molecules in systems chemistry, maximizing the degree or level of molecules in systems chemistry, and importantly, maintaining complexity at a level permitted by the environment where both thermodynamic and kinetically controlled reactions occur. It should be noted, maintaining complexity at a level permitted by the environment serves to connect complexification with teleonomy, for at the most fundamental level, the purpose of life is to persist. The tenacity to persist appears as a driving force in both the creation and maintenance of life. This apparent force has been recognized since antiquity, 
Henry Bergson originally proposed Elan Vital in 1907 to explain the vigor and drive of animate matter to survive and grow. However, as recently as 2000, Stuart Kaufman recognized the core of life remains shrouded from view, stating, quote, but what makes a cell alive is still not clear to us. The center is still mysterious, unquote. Craig Venter points out all cells will die if they cannot make new proteins on a continuous basis. Life's apparent vital force, which persists within each living cell, even as atoms and molecules composing the cell are impermanent, remains a black box for theoretical and evolutionary biologists. Darwin believed life's goal is to maximize fitness, which is to survive and reproduce. Jacques Monod introduced teleonomy in 1971 to indicate an activity directed towards realization of a biological program, the most important being the genetics, that is reproduction and evolution. Pierre Luigi Luisi emphasizes life transitions through spontaneous and, and, and continuous increases in molecular complexity. Noting biological systems in contrast to micelle or crystal formation, which are under thermodynamic control, appear to have a rather specific finality, or in other words, a purpose, and are under kinetic control. Addy Pross notes biological systems will tend to be transformed from dynamically, kinetically less stable to more stable systems. For him, the question is how can any natural organization of matter act on its own behalf? He asks, quote, what is the nature and source of life's apparent elan vital, that teleonomic character already evident in a bacterial cell, unquote. Arriving at a precise definition of life's purposeful nature is difficult. However, all the above imageries share as their core the maintenance and propagation of the system. It is important to observe, however, prebiotic organic molecules also advanced and a specific level of complexity was maintained both in the interstellar medium and on the prebiotic earth via neo-Darwinian complexification of organic molecules and rudimentary systems chemistry. Advancing and maintaining complexity are components to defining the purposeful nature of animate matter and remain applicable as life transitions from prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells to multicellular life forms imbuing a richer sense of purpose as these systems complexify. Is the transition of matter to a higher state of complexity with an apparent teleonomy unique, or is this transition simply a manifestation of the set forth broad definition of complexification driven forward by the forces and mechanisms to be proposed? And although representing a phase shift is nonetheless consistent with the general waxing and waning of complexity throughout the universe. When considering life's purposeful nature, maintenance of the system is paramount. However, to fully invest life's purposeful nature, advancing the variety and degree of complexity and maximizing the net amount of complex matter are also indispensable. When applied, these component definitions explain the full spectrum of life's unique features and purposeful nature. Understanding why life is created is an intriguing question. Forces and mechanisms creating complex systems can be countered by forces and mechanisms that destroy those systems. Pierre Luigi Luisi declares there is no transcendental principle in the transition to life, but notes researchers are in disagreement as to the main motor of upward movement. Addy Pross differentiates the historical question of how life formed from the ahistorical question of why life arose, so to identify the driving force behind the process. He believes answering the ahistorical question will help to understand the historical question, and the real challenge is to decipher the ahistorical principle behind the emergence of life. To understand why matter of any kind would tend to complexify in the biological direction, noting, quote, a mechanism is required for the process of complexification far away from equilibrium systems that adheres to the second law, unquote. Stuart Kaufman proposes when a sufficiently diverse mix of molecules accumulates somewhere, the chance an autocatalytic system will spring forth is a near certainty. Eric Chasen has shown as each type of ordered system becomes more complex, its normalized energy budget increases and specific energy flow reifies a complexity metric. 
and is the potential evolutionary driver of all constructive events, from the origins of the universe to humans on Earth. Stanley Salf believes form, that is life, is capable of initiating convective flows that move energy from gradients toward the sink more effectively than haphazard conduction. Thus, life's purpose is to propel entropy production through a system of organic chemistry. So why we are here can be understood employing a tiered energy flow metric to explain increasingly complex systems. A teleonomic description where animate matter exists to enhance entropy production or autopoiesis, which is itself sufficient to explain the existence of living matter. All these perspectives on why there is life are profoundly helpful in gaining a deeper and more complete understanding to the question. To understand why there is life, however, we must attempt to define life within the biological context. Well, innately, we understand life. Nevertheless, we have difficulty defining its essential characteristics. A clear and unambiguous Dr. Thompson? Sound is out? Yeah, the image is not moving either. I can't hear you. That means you're frozen. Right, I'm frozen up. I've had this happen to me in the past. Mm. Let's wait for 30 seconds. Uh, I'm trying to reach uh, Toten. Uh, just give me a second. By phone. Yeah, I've often had to reboot. Uh, looks like some reason we have not been able to hear you, to, uh, Jim Thornton. No, just the like last one minute. Oh, really? My God. Oh my God, that's very bad. Let's restart that and we'll sort out that issue later. But who? Uh, I'm looking at the participants and I think uh, once you back up, you can start, uh, Jim. Uh, I think your skin is not up yet, but you can see the screen if you are there. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, no, sir. There we go. Mm -hmm. Ramji, yes, please. Uh, actually, I'm talking to Dr. Thornton, and uh, he should be up shortly. Just give him 30 seconds or one minute more. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Please. I think. Uh, yeah, your screen is out. Yep. Up. It's up. And uh, if you could full screen and then go from there. Unmuted. Yep. Okay. Can everybody hear me? Yep. I can okay, hear you. So I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna go from this slide here. Yeah. Uh, I believe this is where we ended. Um, so. Metabolism, though an essential component in defining complexity of animate matter, can remain dormant, as in the slow metabolism of uh, endoless life transitioning through a seed or spore stage, extracellular viruses, and tardigrades. Maintaining the level of complexity allowed in an environment is one component of the broad definition of complexification. 
Maintaining the level of animate complexification is synonymous with metabolism. Reproduction and growth are intertwined. Reproduction subsumes there has been growth, otherwise the cytoplasmic volume would continue to decline, and there is a lower limit below which life is not possible. Also, there is an upper limit beyond which the metabolic machinery becomes inefficient and metabolism will falter and fail. Therefore, as the volume of animate matter increases, cell division must occur. Growth and cell division are manifestations of increasing the net quantity of animate matter. Maximizing the degree and variety of complexity are two components of the general complexification of matter. So for animate complexity to be fully realized, evolution will occur. Evolution is the expression of increasing the level and variety of complexity of, an animate, of animate matter permitted by the environment. <clears throat> so the difficulty characterizing life partly reflects the inability to subdue our biocentric prejudices. Addie Pross states, somehow we know more and more of the cell's mechanisms, yet that knowledge seems to bring us no closer to understanding the essence of biological reality and that understanding life will, re will re require us to offer an unambiguous explanation for life's unique characteristics. <clears throat> Perhaps disengaging from our anthropocentric worldview and subduing our biocentric prejudices further insight can be achieved into why we are here and how animate matter relates to the universe. From this detached perspective and employing a broad definition of complexity, commonalities of increasing complexity of the animate and inanimate realm are seen to be synonymous. Simultaneously, life's unique characteristics and teleonomic character are readily explained. So the question is, why does matter complexify? When elements and subatomic particles interact, the variety and complexity of elemental matter advances. Gravity drives this process by increasing the proximity and kinetic energy of elemental matter. Within stars, gravitational energy is converted to heat, creating tremendous collision velocities necessary to overcome repulsion between positive charged nuclei. In a supernova explosion, electrons are driven into, uh, into protons, creating neutrons. The enormous increase in neutrons is driven into elements beyond polonium that have short half-lives. This shock wave following the initial implosion generates extreme pressures and temperatures, resulting in an immense rise in fusion processes in the outer envelopes of the collapsing star. The shock wave acts as a surrogate of gravity, further driving elemental evolution. While the creation of elements requires the gravitational force, the electromagnetic force is compulsory for chemical reactions and is a fundamental energy source for driving thermodynamically unfavorable reactions. However, since reactions cannot occur without contact between reactants, mechanisms enhancing proximity are critical to the chemistry of molecular constructions. Gravity is the prime mechanism for bringing reactants into apposition. However, gas density under all interstellar conditions is so low that multiparticle gas phase reactions are unlikely. Therefore, biparticle reactions, which have limited capacity for creating complexity, are the major process for forming molecules in the gas phase. In lieu of the interstellar medium's low density, other means can supplement gravity in bringing reactants into proximity, including kinetic factors such as shock waves, solar wind, and the temperature of gas clouds, and by electrostatic attraction between ionic species and neutral species through van der Waal forces. Importantly, interstellar grains vastly advance chemistry by augmenting proximity of reactants. Sun Kwok and Pascal Ehrenfreund believe chemical pathways that could not proceed in the gas phase were possible with surface catalysts on interstellar grains, leading to formation of a rich variety of complex molecules. Grains vastly enhance multiparticle reactions and act as a strong surrogate of gravity. To summarize, specific interstellar environments determine the degree, variety, quantity of organic material created and maintained. Creation, but also destruction of complex molecules occurs through a variety of mechanisms. Turnover to the highest level of complex compounds allowed by the environment will ensue. 
against this backdrop of why advancing complexity occurs in the interstellar medium, what similarities are there of increasing organic complexities on the prebiotic Earth? For complexity to advance, an environment absent the destructive effects and low densities of the interstellar medium was required. Earth provided this environment, greatly enhancing the proximity and volume of reactants by virtue of gravity's influence at the Earth's surface. Proximity was further augmented by surrogates of gravity, including evaporation, freezing, and concentrating reactants on clay surfaces and alkaline vents. Clay surfaces enhance proximity by bringing reactants into juxtaposition, catalyzing reactions, stabilizing intermediates, and catalyzing subsequent reactions. By concentrating reactants, organic abiotic reactions will form amino acids and the nitrogen bases, adenine, guanine, cytosine, and uracil. Synthesis of sugars and fatty acids is a multi-step process requiring a catalyst, which can be a clay mineral. Nucleosides are formed by the condensation of a sugar and a nitrogen base through evaporation. Nucleosides are converted to nucleotides by heating to dryness. Polymers of amino acids and nucleotides require energy in the form of activating groups or condensing agents for bond formation. All these pathways require a certain level of concentration of reactants. Jeffrey Zube claims simply changing the concentration can create thermodynamically favored reactions, that is, peptide and nucleotide bond formation, to create polymers. Self-reproduction, making similar things, and self-replication, making exact copies, satisfy the requirement that the variety, degree, and net volume of complexity must advance. Pierre Luigi Luisi points out these processes are not rare, but rather enjoy a degree of generality to either side of the animate divide and can be under thermodynamic control, such as micelle formation, or kinetic control, such as polymerization reactions, the ultimate goal of which is to guarantee the complexity of the biological structure. Once the ceiling of complexification of the abiotic organic environment was achieved, as occurred in the interstellar medium, complexification of organic matter halted. For complexification to advance further, a more protected environment was required where concentrating effects would greatly exceed that of the prebiotic earth. The thermodynamically favored construction of the plasma membrane allowed this transition. A feature of animate matter is the ability to exaggerate gravity's effect by establishing a far greater capacity to concentrate complex molecules and elements within a limited cytoplasmic environment and subcompartmental spaces, which favors kinetic autocatalytic reactions. Stuart Kaufman proposes when a collection of chemicals contain enough different kinds of molecules, some of which will act as enzymes, a metabolism will crystallize from the broth. Enzymes are powerful surrogates of gravity, exceeding concentrating effects of the cytosol by bringing reactants into proximity in highly specific relationships to facilitate the rate of reactions for the maintenance and advancement of complexity. Autopoiesis defines a system capable of sustaining itself due to an inner network of reactions that regenerates the system's components. Autopoiesis is the manifestation of the broad definition of advancing complexity driven forward by the forces and mechanisms proposed, wherein the degree, variety, and amount of complexity will be maximized and maintained commensurate with the environment. Pierre Luigi Luisi notes, prebiotic vesicles can form spontaneously, grow, and self-reproduce, and declares the creation of vesicles was extremely important in the transition to animate matter. The emergent property is the creation of an internal environment that discriminates between living and non-living and explains the quality of self. Interestingly, this separateness imbues the system with our strongly biocentric view the system is striving to survive as the components of complexification are realized by the forces and mechanisms proposed. It is important to understand each descriptor of complexification may be prioritized over other descriptors depending upon the environment. Therefore, metabolism, growth, reproduction, and evolution will be ordered as the environment allows. Notice life's goal or purpose from this ahistorical perspective is seen to be identical to that of advancing complexity of the inanimate realm. 
Nevertheless, it is difficult to accept without attaching a cognitive sentient element or invoking teleonomy or a vital impetus that echelons of advancing logistical strategies existed prior to life and then evolved as organic matter crossed the animate divide. The classic signaling networks associated with autopoiesis were most certainly present before animate matter and included negative and positive feedback loops, feed forward relay, and stimulatory or inhibitory crosstalk. These basic logistical mechanisms for advancing complexity progressed exponentially with the transition to life and are synonymous with autopoiesis. Therefore, it is reasonable to conclude the logic of these mechanisms in the prebiotic environment and their transformation to the metabolic machinery, that is autopoiesis, in animate matter is to enact the component definitions of complexification and are driven forward by the forces and mechanisms proposed. Consequently, the enigma of autopoiesis is best understood by abandoning all biocentric, anthrocentric, or cognitive overlay, accepting logistical strategies exist in the absence of cognition and occur at the chemical, cellular, and organism level. So we return to the question, why is there life? Complexity of matter increases under the influence of gravity, the electromagnetic force, and their surrogates. Complexity will be created, the degree, variety, and net amount of complex matter will be maximized, and importantly, complexity will be maintained proportionate to the thermodynamic and kinetic stability of complex matter within an environment. These observations on the evolution of complexity in general, when applied to characteristics of animate matter, strike a common chord. Animate matter behaves precisely the same as inanimate matter when considered from this ahistorical outlook. Thermodynamic and kinetically driven reactions, systems chemistry, autocatalysis, the emergent phenomenon of autopoiesis, and contingent and deterministic processes will ultimately define this transition from the historical perspective throughout the universe. Transition to life is predicted based on this mechanism, and once life is established, a continuous path of increasing complexity is expected. Consequently, because the variety and degree of complexity must be maximized, the interaction of gravity and the electromagnetic force and their surrogates with animate matter provides the motive force for Darwinian evolution. Because the net amount of complex matter will be maximized, the engine behind unicellular and multicellular organism growth and reproduction is equally explained by this interaction. And finally, maintaining animate complexity at a level permitted by the environment is synonymous with metabolism. At the most fundamental level, the DNA repair enzyme cited above is performing according to the dictates of this interaction and not an Elan Vital in the classical sense. Separation from the environment through creation of the plasma membrane is essential for life and along with enzymes augments the gravitational effect of increasing the concentration and specific relation of reactants to advance autopoiesis. Importantly, the cell membrane imposes the notion of self. From our anthrocentric vantage point, under the guise of self, life's purpose, is the manifestation of optimizing all the components of complexification, particularly its maintenance. Therefore, when disengaging from our biocentric worldview, animate matter is basically an extremely complex and concentrated system of organic matter, which is maintained through metabolism, can increase in net volume through growth and reproduction, and can increase in the degree and variety of complexity through Darwinian evolution, by remaining separate from its higher entropy environment. When considering the phenomenon of life through the mechanism proposed, the question, why is there life? The anthrocentric question, why are we here? And the mystery of life becomes less opaque. Under appropriate environmental conditions, life is a probable outcome whenever or wherever matter is subjected to these forces. And that concludes my talk. Thank you so much, everybody, for your time. And sorry for the interruption in the middle of the talk. I think we got all the slides included, though. Awesome. That is great. Thank you, Dr. That James Thompson. Um, although we had the technical difficulty, we, uh, we survived that, and uh, we finished it nicely. So I appreciate your patience. Uh, are there questions from the audience? Yeah, I would like to ask a question, actually a comment and a question. 
when I think of why there is life, I, I really look at Schrodinger's uh, basically saying that life is composed of two fundamental processes in nature. One that comes order from order and the other one order from disorder. And the order from order comes from basically genes generating order from order through the DNA double helix. The other one, the order from disorder is slightly more complex in terms of looking at systems biology and the second law. But uh, Jim talked about the existence of living systems, and I, and I differentiate that between the existence of, exist, existence of living, uh, living systems versus the origins of life. So to me, one is, for example, there are necessary conditions for life, and a lot of thermodynamics can explain these necessary conditions for, for life. But uh, what about sufficient conditions for life? Um, Perhaps, Jim, you can comment on that? Yeah, okay, thank you. So again, uh, the, the, my purpose in, in trying to answer all these questions was to try to get away from the historical aspects of how life was created because I don't have answers to that, nobody does. And I was more interested in standing back and trying to look at, are there any driving forces that advance complexity? Um, and, and I came up with these ideas of two of the forces of nature that drive complexity. Um, if complexity has to advance, and if my cell formation is thermodynamically favored, it seems probable to me that there is the likelihood that life will be created throughout the universe based upon the very important thermodynamic uh, factor that my cells are easily created, uh, and that complexity is always advancing um, in one form or another. Uh, as far as the uh, uh, information from information, I don't try to direct any attention to how DNA was formed and how it is, was able to uh, provide information to next generations. But my point about advancing the uh, amount of complexity, as I said, does require cell division. It has to have cell division, otherwise uh, cells would become, uh, would not be able to function as they got too large. So. Uh, it is necessary for cell division. It is necessary that cells divide and, and propagate. And within that context, somehow information was passed on. Autocatalytic systems will, uh, if you have a cell that has autocatalytic conditions to it and that cell divides, it is still alive. Each cell still has autocatalytic components to it. The question you're asking is how did DNA become the messenger for information? I don't have an answer for, but my my point is, is that it's driven forward by these two forces of nature. I hope that helps to understand or gives you some uh, answer to that question. Thank you. May I ask was, a question? May yes. I ask a question? I was, I was struck by your use of the word complexity uh, in describing the driving force of what manifests uh, evolution. Uh, the reason why I was struck by that is what I've come to understand from looking at uh, statistical mechanics from uh, a more fundamental information theoretic uh, standpoint is that entropy is complexity and that what you're talking about with uh, the complexity of life increasing is the is what we call the second law uh, in engineering and in, in physics. Uh, have you looked at that quantification of, of complexity or entropy uh, using uh, Jane's approach of uh, subjective probability theory? Well, I, I have to uh, provide a disclaimer. I, I, as you know, I'm a cardiac surgeon um, oh, and, and I, I really don't have any expertise. And what I know of thermodynamics is, uh, is very rudimentary. I, I do know that uh, complex structures can occur, such as crystal formation and micelle formation, which are thermodynamically favored events. And then, then there can also be advancing complexity that requires input of energy and the release of energy to form these dynamic kinetic systems. So um, those are the two avenues in which complexity of matter can increase, and life obviously has chosen the path of using uh, uh, thermodynamics with uh, Manesh, uh, can you system. give me something to eat, please? So, I'm sorry. So, um, I probably don't have a sound answer to your question, but uh, the purpose of, I tried to define complexity in the simplest form I could, and looking just at matter, and that then being elements and, and, uh, and molecules. I, I use that as my basis for trying to understand how life, which clearly is a very advanced complex system, might relate to these fundamental forces. 
Thank you. Uh, there is a question on the chat which says, isn't there a link from energy to information that is missing in here? So, you know, there is basically this uh, question that I think is related to the previous question. Yeah, I think it's related to the previous question and I don't propose to have an answer to that. Um, yeah, in information is, is, trans is, is transmitted from one generation to the next generation through this very sophisticated process of DNA and, DNA and RNA. But as I said, if you just look at an autocatalytic system as suggested by uh, other researchers, you can have an autocatalytic system that's completely deficient in any DNA whatsoever. And autocatalytic systems uh, theoretically can reproduce and, and grow and divide. So that's an example of information being passed on absent um, DNA. Uh, but, it is, but this does not attempt to uh, answer the question of how information is passed from one generation to the next with a very complex system of DNA that we know uh, defines all life. Can I just uh, maybe elaborate on that? Because I was the one who wrote that question, um, Jerry and Ann. I uh, really was more interested in not the transmission or duplication of information over generations, as I think you're alluding to now, I was more interested in the connection between information and negative entropy in the sense that if there's a direction that's being taken here, one can uh, at least make a linkage there between negative entropy information and the direction that's taken. So maybe if you could address the creation of the information rather than the transmission and duplication of the information, that would be more to my point. Uh, well, again, I, I, I don't, I can't answer that question. That's, um, that's beyond my, my expertise. Um, this is, this is great discussion point though. So I would say that in the interest of time, we should stop here. Sure. And 